welcome to Getting Bookish Season 2. This is a podcast where we discuss our favorite things, books. And in Season 2, we're really excited because we're going to be having a lot more guests, both readers and bookish friends, so we can learn about their lives and what they're reading. Yes, and today's guest is very special. He's my friend, Commodore James, and he is with us today. Say hi. Hello. So he is going to be our guest for today, and I'm really excited to have him on our podcast because not only is he a friend from the past, but he also does some really exciting things that you will soon find out about in the world of books. So Commodore, can you start out with just telling us a little bit about yourself, um, what you do in your spare time, anything exciting about you? Um, yeah, I live in Los Angeles. I've been here since 2002. Uh, I came out here to pursue acting, uh, not really, not really acting, but performing. Like I, I was just that sort of person, uh, outgoing uh, performer. Um, and so I did the acting route for a while, got into the union, performed at theme parks, got in a few commercials. Um, and then you, Shauna, uh, I think back in 2011, uh, it was really weird because we had taken a class together and then you had moved off across the country and hadn't really heard from you in a while. And then all of a sudden you just out of the blue, you're like, hey, have you ever done audiobooks?" And I was like, no. And then you told me about that. And then and that was it. Then I hadn't heard from you again for a while. And I, I went down that path. And now uh, since what has it been like nine, eight, seven years, I've recorded over 114 audiobooks. Wow. Yeah. See, I just fly and I drop little nuggets of wisdom to people and then I fly away. Yep. <laughs> yep. And what's funny is I had all the success and I was like, wow, she just she just said that and I have all the success. That's really great. And then I don't know, it was maybe a year or so later, two years, you were uh, you called me up out of the blue and you're like, hey, I have to go to set but I have to take two children and there has to be an adult with each child. Can you come and come and help me? And I was like, oh no, she's dropping another nugget. I have to do this. And so, <laughs> and so I went to set and I just took care of the little babies and I didn't, you know, it was just like this weird little thing of like, okay, yeah, Lord, it happened once. What's going to happen this time? <laughs> and I just, I just held a baby in a trailer and kept it from crying. And that was, that was it. But still it was fun. <laughs> yeah. That was on the set of, was it criminal minds? I don't know. I was in the. Tr I was only on set for like maybe thirty seconds. Like literally, they came in. They're like, "We don't need them," and I walked back out. And yeah. So I, don't know what I think um, that was Shaylin and Lucas, and I want to say they were <laughs> maybe f five weeks old or maybe ten yeah. weeks old. They were tiny, tiny babies. And when you work babies yeah. on a set, you have to have one adult per child, and the rules are super strict. Like they can only be on set for a max of. I think they can only be working for 10 minutes, but they can be on set for 30 minutes. It was something crazy like that. And so yeah. I called him. I was, I was, I was like, who, who do I know that can come to a set really quick? I'm like, Hey, haven't spoke to you for a while. Come yeah. hold my child. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's crazy. The rules they have, uh, yeah. like they were literally like, don't come in to, don't come in yet. Like you have to stay off stage yeah. until we tell you. I'm like, okay. I have, Cause I, I guess they start a, a timer. I, yeah, they do. Cause the child, I don't know, welfare is there and <laughs> like Coogan laws and all that. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah, before that, um, you and I performed together on stage mm -hmm. and we went, yeah. we went to iOS together, which is no longer yep. there. That's so sad. Well, the building's there, but the, the, building's the organization's there. not there. Yeah. 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 And so we did a bunch of stage shows together, improv. Mm -hmm. Well, Dan, wasn't Danny Pudi in our class? He was. Yeah. Yes. And he went on to be in, in a community. Yeah. Do you know that show, Community? A TV show. Chevy oh. Chase, they're all at a community college. Um, yeah. He was one of the students there. Yeah. Right. But that was a, yeah. that was a awesome, you guys awesome are so experience. Famous. I feel so left out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because now I'm just like mom life. And so when I mention something from like the past, people are like, what you, you did? What? I know. I'm like, I know. I just play with like Legos and mermaids now, but I used to be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so I'm so happy that you are here with us because not only are you our season opener, but you're our first male guest. So, oh, well. Yes. 
So you Breaking hold that, that hat glass too. Glass ceiling? Yeah. I guess? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Swinging the door open for the rest of the guys. You are. Yes. We're going to line them up because we want to broaden our audience here and get a male perspective on things too. <laughs> All right. All right. So first male perspective then. Tell us what is your favorite genre and favorite book title if you have one. Oh, well, I guess to read for myself and uh, professionally, I like science fiction and fantasy. Um, I like building those worlds. And that's mainly my, my passion in life is to <laughs> build false worlds, I guess, so people can escape. Um, I do that in the theme parks. Uh, I do that in basically everything I do in my podcasts that I make. I like making those little bubbles of escapism, and I feel like I can do that a lot better with uh, sci-fi. Uh, my favorite book that I've read was as a child. It was called The Zero People. It's by Gurney Williams. It was published in June of 1974. Um, and it's, I, I can't really say if it was an orig too original at the time. Basically, it's a dystopian future where uh, the level of the floor that you live in in the building is your status. So the higher up you are, the richer you are. And so there are these people that don't even live in the building. They live on the streets. They're called the zero people. Um, and there's so much pollution that below like floor five, you don't even have any sunlight. And so it's their life of trying to get by and make it into like the big buildings and, and get a better life for themselves. Sounds like a cruise ship. Like if you're on the bottom, you don't even get the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating though. I love, um, yeah. that's right up your alley and fantasy also. And there've been a couple books published recently that, sounds so similar in plot, which is very interesting. Well, there's lots of genres like that. Even the time machine was like that with the Murlocs and the Eloins of like two diff disparate societies. And so it's not wholly original, but you know, it's yeah. a trope, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So in, um, you know, on the opposite side of that, what is a book that you read that you just hated? Like for audiobooks? Um, oh, no, that, that you read personally. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> God, I can't really think. I don't like history. I don't, uh, I, sh I should enjoy history. I can't get into it. Like, it's weird. I can listen, I can read like science fiction history, like the Silmarillion by Tolkien, which is all history of the Lord of the Rings well, realm. And that's interesting to me. But if you start talking about Pocahontas and Squanto and, George Washington is like, I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so you're definitely so, not a nonfiction historical reader. No. <laughs> and even if you get into like Abraham Lincoln zombie hunter, that or whatever that book was, that yeah. is even like you're pushing your luck with me. Because <laughs> you're, They're trying you're getting to trick off you. close to reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just can't do it. Oh, I tried to read one of the Jane Austen books and literally first chapter, I was like, no, 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 I just can't, I just can't invest my time in this. It's just not me. <laughs> they have like a zombie hunter version of Pride and Prejudice also. I Did know. Really? Yeah. Pride and Prejudice and zombies. Yeah. And zombies. Yeah. So you mentioned that Shauna got you kind of started. She planted the seed yeah. to what became your book narration career but then yeah. what was like the first step after shauna mentioned it uh basically um she t i think she told me about acx which is the audible amazon uh website that authors will go to with their books in hand and audition narrators and then the two will come together and they'll finish a project and then it will go for sale on um Audible and Amazon alongside the hardback versions or paperback versions as well. Um, and so the, the author will get 20% and the narrator will get 20% and then they will get 60%. And that's just the business. <laughs> and yeah. that's how I got started. And when I started, I mean, you started very closely to when I did. So mm -hmm. I was by no means like a pro. I had a couple books under my belt when he started. Um, but I feel like uh, um, audio Audible wasn't a big thing. Like audiobooks weren't this huge thing at that time. I know some people mm -hmm. listen to them, but it wasn't like it is now where you can mention it and they're like, oh, I have Audible. 
Like yeah. I had to explain a lot what that was. And, and people thought I was almost going like behind in times by reading, like narrating a book. They're like, do people even do that anymore? Like, yeah. Cause <laughs> people still say books on tape. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, I don't think there's been a book on tape for a decade. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It, it was really, it was really fun to start that. And I remember when he was asking me these questions, I'm like, I don't know the answer to that one. I'm like, well, you know what? I just kind of Googled everything and I YouTubed everything. And I think that's what makes it really fun is like he and I literally started with zero knowledge. I mean, we didn't go to a class or anything. I mean, I don't know what you did, but I Googled and I YouTubed everything to learn how to do uh, it. I, you know, yeah, I think I did that for the technical side of it, but mm -hmm. for the performance side of it, I just jumped in and yeah. I auditioned and somebody said yes. So I was like, yeah. okay, let's do this first book. Now to go back and to listen to that first book now, oh, it, uh, <laughs> it's like, oh my God, <laughs> no, Finkel is Einhorn. It's just, it's awful. It is. Um, it's very painful. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's, that's just how anything is. I mean, people who are on long running television shows, they will go back and watch the first season and been like, what was I doing? You know, it's like seeing the crudely drawn Homer Simpson on the first season to what he is today. It's just mm -hmm. like, it's, it takes some evolution. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And, um, did, had you listened to a lot of audiobooks before you started narrating? less than a dozen in my entire life. Yeah. Um, I remember the first audiobook, and it really was on tape, was The Hobbit by Tolkien, or Tolkien, however you say it. And it was like six tapes, and I, that was yeah. my first one. And I just remember listening to it for hours, and because you're painting the picture in your mind, it's like, oh, this is amazing. Um, yeah, that was my first one. And then I think I did some other like sci-fi ones, like uh, Robot Apocalypse and and you know, of the genre. Yeah, I think I hadn't listened to any audiobooks. So I really didn't even know how to talk. Thankfully, I had <laughs> acting experience. But I do remember yeah. like when there was a man's voice thinking, do I change my voice or do I not? So in some yeah. of them, I didn't. And in some of them, I was like, and now I'm going to. And so when I listen to that now, yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> like who is buying this book to stop? Yeah, <laughs> and that, that's an interesting point of like, I had a book that I think it had 54 or 56 different characters in it that just kept coming back. And so I had to like write notes and like, I should have had that with me. I remember some of them were like bad Riker impersonation from Star Trek. That's one character. And so I'm trying to do his voice. Um, and, and it doesn't take much. Like usually this is the voice that I'm using to narrate. And this is also the voice of the main hero. It's right. just going to be me unless it's specific to like he's Southern or he's British. Right. And then if there's another person, then he might talk a little slower and this is going to be his character or it's going to be somebody who has their jaw out just a little bit. And it's subtle, but people will hear that. Um, and so you just just with those three variations, you can come up with nine different characters of having the jaw out, jaw talking fast, jaw talking slow, no jaw talking fast, talking slow. And, and those are characters yeah. and it all works. Not everyone has to be an overacted. Yeah, character. you don't have to have accents or anything. You just—it's way you talk. I had one character in—it was a sci-fi one—and I made it every time he said a verb, he paused. So like every time he said a verb, you would pause. So it was like a, he had Tourette's. You know, oh. Even though his character didn't have Tourette's, that's what it was kind of like. That's and Arthur was like, "Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, so you just come up with interesting <laughs> things." And it's, it's something like, it's not going to take the person out of it. Like, what are they doing? But it's enough to make it interesting to listen to. Um, As someone who listens to a lot of audiobooks, I feel like sometimes you'll have a reader that doesn't do anything. Like, they just read it in their normal reading mm -hmm. voice, which isn't unpleasurable. But at the same time, it's like, it's really hard as the listener to, like, keep track of who's who. Like, yeah. Listen to, like, this whole thing, you'll be like, wait who's talking right now? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and so it can be really hard to follow. So, but like, I'm sitting here and I'm fascinated. I'm like, wow, I like could totally hear the differences in your voice with just. And yeah. Voice. Just really subtle. And, oh, and that's yeah. all you need. Cause, cause if you ha it's kind of like uh, audio whiplash, I call it. If you have like two people having a conversation, one's Southern, one's not, he's like, Hey, how you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine. It's like, oh, God, it's too much. You just need to be like, oh, just just enough, like a little bit of sugar in the coffee. That's all you need. 
Um, you don't want to be drinking a pile of sugar. You just very subtle. Yeah, you don't want to ha- make the listener have to like take an ear pod out. You know, yeah. To, to get like fifty yeah. percent of the sound. <laughs> yeah. Like none of your characters should be the star. Like you're it's a cast, so they all have to be on an even playing Ooh, field. Ooh, that's a good quote. I yeah, like that's that. A really good yeah, tip. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so for our listeners that might be interested in starting to narrate books, what Mm -hmm. would they do to get started? What kind of equipment do they need? What would be their first couple steps? Um, I'd say the first thing before you buy any equipment um, is, has anyone ever told you that you have a good voice? If people have, then you're on the right track. If they haven't, then you need to take a class. Mm -hmm. And then you let the people in that class, your, your classmates and the teacher, tell you if you've had a good voice and you might have to pull it out of them like hey i give you permission to hurt my feelings i need you to be honest because i'm making a big decision do you think i have a good voice um and if you get those checks in your check marks uh then you can move on to maybe buying equipment and going forward um i think the next thing you need to do is do you enjoy it i mean do you enjoy what you are making do you listen to audiobooks yourself do you like reading uh do you like learning Um, because it's a lot of research. Like I go through a book and if I don't know a word, I have to look it up so I know how to pronounce it. Um, and so it's, it's a bit academic. So you have to be comfortable with that. Um, you have to be comfortable with, uh, being locked up in a quiet room for hours at a time. Um, (laughs) because that's literally what you're doing. You have to be able to work self-motivated. If you're not self-motivated, it's fine. You can. There are other things that you can do, but you've got to be able to crack the whip on yourself to do these deadlines. Because the author gives um, you deadlines or the, the oh, publisher, yeah. and you yeah. sign a contract that you'll have yeah, it done in a certain contract. amount of time. Yeah, and I, I don't know what happens when you don't meet one because I've always have. Um, but you don't want to do that because, one, it's going to give you a bad reputation. They'll be like, he didn't meet it. I'm just... There's hundreds of people auditioning for these things. I don't have to deal with this person and they'll, they'll never come back to you. Um, but I'm at a point now that I don't usually have to audition too often because I have people emailing me, Hey, I got some books. Do you want to do them? And I do them. Um, but that's also taken since 2011 that I said, so seven years of me working steadily, like always, almost always working on a book to get to that point. Um, but getting back to getting started, uh, if you have a good voice and you're interested in it and you're ready to go, um, I would get, <clears throat> a entry-level microphone Uh, my first microphone was an apogee mic mic by apogee the company it's a usb mic and i could plug it directly into my ipad Um, i got into my ipad because they're silent and i found that bringing a laptop into my closet um, the fan was making too much noise but an ipad makes no noise and so i recorded into that on a program called twisted wave which is free uh i think it was free or less than five bucks yeah, because I didn't invest too much into it. Um, so I recorded directly into that, and then I re- uh, output that into my computer and used Audacity, which is another free program, which I love and still use to this day. I like it better than uh, GarageBand or Pro Tools. Um, all of those have way too much, and but Audacity gives me exactly what I want. Um, and that is probably enough to get started. Oh, well, there's other little things you need, uh, like a pop filter that I have here. Uh, so, cause if I don't use it and I say, uh, it's horrible, <clears throat> but if I do the same thing, it doesn't make any noise. So you also have a good water bottle. <laughs> yes. And I oh. absolutely <clears throat> second that I never realized how much work your vocal cords get until you start narrating books. I mean, have you ever yep. gotten into a coughing fit while recording? Mm-hmm. And like you just can't. It happened stop. just now. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking. I said my voice caught. I was like, hold on a second. Let me get my water bottle. <laughs> it's um, terrible, and it feels like there's nothing yeah. you can do to fix it. So you have to just take a break. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, definitely use room temperature water because cold water constricts your vocal cords, and it's just like tightening the strings in a guitar. It will change the pitch of your voice. Same with hot water as well. So you just want to have room temperature water so that you're on an even keel. Um, no sugar, uh, and no milk because they'll get phlegmy. Um, and, uh, there's also something called mouth noise. So if I get really close to the microphone and I'm whispering, you'll hear this and it's going to make your skin crawl, but it's like, 
and oh, it's like oh, I hate that. But you'll be you'll go back and listen to your recording, and there may be too much of that. And a good way to get rid of that is uh, to bite into a piece of green apple, um, just a slice of it, and you don't have to eat it. You can just like bite into it, you know, and then just take a little bit of a bite, and that. Uh, will change the pH of your saliva and make wow. it less sticky. And so that will go away. Uh, but you have to avo- also avoid sugar and milk because uh, those are really big things to making the, the mouth noise. Wow. I feel like these uh, tips are good just for recording our podcast. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you seem to be far enough away, but sometimes like if you get close enough, it's really going to pick up. And so that's when I'll, I'll make sure that I have some. Yeah. Um, so that and water, and I think that's enough for the basics. It can get more complicated than that. Um, and what about yeah. location? I think a lot of people think that audiobooks oh. are always uh, narrated in a studio that you have to pay for. Mm-hmm. Um, I started out, I, had, I was lucky enough to have not really a walk-in closet, but a closet that I could step into and close the door behind me. And the clothes in front of you are great. They, they just suck up the noise so well. Um, and that's all I had was just that. Um, and I, when I moved into my new place, I had the same sort of setup, but then I have what I'm sitting in now, which is kind of like, it's a weird elbow in my, in my home where it's like you, you leave the living room, you turn a quarter and go to the bathroom. And it's like this little square room that I have. And so let me see if I can show you. Yeah. Let me grab one. I built acoustic panels. Here's one of them. Basically, you just get some acoustic uh, foam paneling, which is what this stuff is. And then you can build like a frame out of this like wood. And you can find these on on YouTube. That's where I found it. And then you wrap it up in some cloth and it looks really good. And then these are really great for taking the ping out of a room. And so where I'm recording now, I'm like... I don't know, two feet away from the wall, if this paneling wasn't there, you'd, it'd be very sharp and bright and echoey. But with this stuff, it just, it deadens that sound. And that's what I use. That's awesome. Yeah, when I did my narrating, I was in my walk-in closet, which was just full of clothes, like on all three walls. And then behind me was a door. So it really had that kind of uh, warm sound where yeah. without the clothes... It's like you said, it's very echoey and sounds like you're one person in a tiny gymnasium. Yeah. Uh, A good way to test it is uh, just go into where you're going to recording and just put your hand up to your mouth and just clap and listen for that. You want that ping of it coming back to you. And if you can hear that, then you need to put a paneling basically in front of you and on the side so that the sound doesn't bounce back because that's what you're hearing is the echo and you don't want that echo. So yeah, clothes work well. I know people that record for me, like when I'm doing audiobooks, I'll hire actors and they'll record under their comforter on their bed. <laughs> and and that works cuz they're I mean, they got good voices but they're not really, you know, interested in investing in the equipment and that's what they use. <laughs> so when you are recording, how long does it take you? Like an average audiobook is 15 um, hours. Yeah. Uh, I have a ratio of about one to three, and that's pretty fast. Uh, so if an audiobook is one hour, it's going to take me three hours of work. Because um, obviously it will take me a little more than an hour to record it, and then I have to go back and I'll listen to the whole thing to just double check that I haven't transposed a word, which happens all the time. Um, getting the pacing right, uh, and then there's about 45 minutes or an hour to administration things of uploading, mastering, um, communicating and stuff like that. Uh, that's just my voice alone. If I bring in other actors or if the author has requested sound effects, music, uh, ambient noise, um, vocal processing, like if people are talking in a room, uh, I want to make it sound like they're talking in a room. So I'll up the reverb to bring in the echo. Uh, that'll be about a one to five ratio. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, I have, I have a pie chart actually. <laughs> Uh, because when I re- record, I record my time of what I'm doing. So uh, let's see. Uh, 44% of my time is recording. 38% is editing. 11% is what I call removing goofs. That's when I go back and uh, I take out my my mistakes. Uh, and then 7% is administration. It's all the, the background stuff. 
Yeah, I love how production is almost equal to recording. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my last project was, looks like 51 minutes of recording and then 45 minutes of editing. Yeah, so if you are one of those yeah. people that don't like the sound of your own voice, you need to get over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it can, it can be tedious, but yeah. So oh, when you go to record, do you read the book I assume through once beforehand. Cold? I've tried it both ways. Um, I mean, <clears throat> it's more if I, I can't say it is kind of fast. If you can just read it cold, if you can do that. Um, yeah, I have done it where I have, I, I'll read the whole book and then I'll go back and record it. I don't know. Cause I'm very, very big on efficiency. I want to do this as quickly as possible because time is money. Mm -hmm. And I feel like just reading it cold works best for me. Um, but I'm not afraid of making mistakes. Like I'll, I'll go through and I have my little dog clicker, which makes a little click sound. So every time I, oop, every time I make a mistake, I'll, every time I make a mistake, I'll go back and I'll, I can see on so the waveform when I'm editing, there's a huge spike that's much bigger than my voice. So I can be like, okay, and I'll just take those out of there. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? I got confused by the dog clicker. <laughs> I did ask you about if you read the oh. book. Oh, if I read, time. yeah, I feel like yeah. For me, having like whenever I would do like story times and things, if I didn't read the book like three times beforehand, oh, I was a mess. Part of that is because when you read a a children's book, it's not facing you, so you're reading it upside down. But part yeah. of it's because I very much want to practically have it memorized. Commodore, do you, <laughs> do you read your books upside down when you're recording them? Probably not. No, no, I tried that, but I kept passing out. I <laughs> tie my ankles to the ceiling and hold the book and it just didn't work. <laughs> <That's effective. laughs> no, so, so for me, I'm usually, I'm reading it for the first time as I'm recording it. Nice. Now, yeah, I don't recommend that, but that's how it works for me. I think you really should read it through the first time, but I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I'm wondering if it was something that was incredibly alien to you, maybe reading the first chapter just to see how the flow of the book goes would be helpful. But I don't think I read anything prior to just starting. And then if I was like, I don't like the mm -hmm. way I'm doing this, then I would just start over. I think that's... Oh, yeah. I've, I've restarted many times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've only actually read through an entire book before I recorded like twice. Uh, the rest of the time, I just want to jump in and get going. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of these books, how do you choose what you want to narrate? Oh, yeah. On ACX, they have filters, so you can pick like what it is you're looking for. Um, they have different pay scales. Uh, basically, there's two ways you can get paid. You can get either paid by per finished hour, um, which ranges from 50 to up to $400 per finished hour, or you can get paid a royalty share, which means you will get uh, twenty percent of all the sales. Um, so with one, you as, you want to get done as quickly as possible because you want to get that money soon. But that's it. Once you get paid, you're done. Uh, the other one uh, is it's going to be out there for I forget how long it is. Uh, maybe it's like seven years before they have to do another contract. Um, but that it's. A good thing to do if you can get a bunch of those it's like weaving a net together to catch fish the more you got the bigger net you have and the more money that you bring in uh, so with me having the majority of mine being a royalty share um, I have brought in anywhere from as low as a hunt well my first check was ten dollars but on <laughs> average I bring in about two hundred dollars to up to two thousand dollars per month on just the sales uh, but it's mostly around the $500. That's the number that I, I budget. Uh, for selecting <laughs> books, how I personally do it is I'll uh, pick the genre. I'll click. They have a box for like um, erotica or adult things. Like if you don't want that, click that. So I, I don't want to do that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just weird for, for me. Uh, and I'll get the length, which I want one to be about eight hours because – for the pay, uh, anything less than that, you're not really making good money because these books sell for like $3 and what do you get in like 20 cents out of that? Uh, so it's got to be at least eight hours. And then the most important thing is the sales rank. Um, 
Now on ACX, if you're on there, all the filters are on the left, but on the right, there's a little pull down menu and you can uh, select it to sort by Amazon sales rank. And you want to find the lowest number possible because if it's number one, that means it's the number one book that's selling on Amazon. So the lower the number, the better. And my books need to be below 100,000 um, because that means that they're, they already have an audience, they're selling well. Um, you wanna find a book that has like a lot of good reviews. Um, yeah, it already has a built-in audience, just makes it easier. That being said, there are still gems that come along that's like, you know, Harry Potter, when it first got on the market, had zero sales and zero reviews. Ugh. So you're gonna have, you might find those books, it's like, oh, I really wanna narrate that. And I've done that as well. And then, um, so you said, authors will contact you mm -hmm. uh, so is there is how do they find you basically um most of the authors that contact me i've already worked with mm -hmm. uh but some they can just go on to acx and you make a profile and they can listen to your samples um and contact you that way Cool. Yeah, they'll just do a search and yeah, you want to make your profile as robust as possible, making sure that you put all your accents because they might be looking for an Australian accent. And if you can do one, but you didn't put it on your profile, they'll never find you. These are such good tips. Yep. <laughs> so what is, can you think of a book right now that was your most enjoyable to narrate? The one you enjoyed the most? Um... Well, there was the to narrate. I don't know. I think I have equal pleasure narrating all of my books, but when it comes to the producing side, uh, there's one called the Engineer. Was it the Engineer Wizard? The Wizard Engineer? No, the Engineer Wizard. Yeah, that's it. The Engineer Wizard, because um, that had I think twelve actors in it, um, and it had a lot of sound effects and ambience and everything but music. Uh, so it was basically a full drama production. Um, the only thing that when listening to it, you know it's not a drama production is because you'd get the he said and she said after every line. Oh, okay. Yeah. But if you took that out, then it'd just be like you're listening to like a movie without pictures. Oh, that's and cool. And that one, I, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. So like a full cast audio book. Yeah. Those are your yeah. favorites, and Liz. They are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love I love those because you can like listen to it and really get into it. Um, yeah. Not that you can't do that with a person's voice, but it just makes it so much more full when you have all the other bells and whistles. Oh, definitely. I yeah. well, because then it is like a movie, and I just get to picture it in my mind, however mm -hmm. I want to. Yeah. And then enjoy the yeah. I love I love an audiobook. So <laughs> was there one that you can think of maybe on the production end that was your least favorite or have there been ones that you were just like oh i never <laughs> want to do something like this again oh gosh well there's <laughs> there's two there's two uh, the first one which was really weird um somebody wanted me to narrate a mathematical textbook <laughs> that would be like, my nightmare uh, are you sure <laughs> like how do i even do that and so it was literally i'd be like here's the formula open parentheses Five oh. plus six, close parentheses, to the second power. No. All over, open parentheses. <laughs> and it was just like mind-numbing. Uh, and I did it. And I, I, I suppose it like, would be helpful for someone who's blind, but they've got to have a better way to learn mathematics. I mean, honestly. Right. Uh, so that one was really weird. And I did it, and I got paid for it, but that was just <laughs> weird. Um, the other one... Uh, an author contacted me out of the blue and she's like, Hey, could you do this book? It's a science fiction epic, uh, like a space novel. I'm like, Oh yeah, that'll be great. And I read a couple chapters and the first two chapters and jumped in and did it. And then by the third chapter, it's actually like a science fiction erotica. Like, oh, no. like, like a PG, like NC 17. It wasn't like really graphic, but it's like every time these two characters came in the room, you knew they were going to have sex. <laughs> And it's like, there's only so many times I can moan and still mean it. You know, I, I said every euphemism for the male and female body part known to man. Like, she must have just had a thesaurus and was like, oh, yes, we'll use this one now. It's like, oh, gosh. Um, I felt like, I felt like that's what she said. Just kept rolling through my mind the whole time. Like, that's what she said. 
And yeah, it was just a lot of grunting. But it's it sold really well, and she paid really well. Like that one was, uh, I got the maximum of four hundred dollars per finished hour, and it was a ten hour book, so that was four thousand dollars to wow. record that book. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, I did it. But then it sold really well and got really good reviews. And she contacted me. She's like, um, hey, uh, I got the second book. You want to do that? And I was like, I don't want to say no because that's unprofessional. Because clearly I've done the first book and it did well. So I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll just, I'll just, you know, give her a ridiculous number. It's like, sure, I'll do it for six hundred and fifty dollars. She's like, okay. I was like, no, <laughs> no. So, so there's two of them out there now. And it, it sells really well because people went from the first book to the second book. And she contacts me again. And I was like, I can't do this. So I was like, $1,000 per finished hour. And she's like, oh, I can't do that. I'm like, all right. Well, you know, I'm busy. Because <laughs> it's uh, like, if I'm going to do it, then I'm going to get paid. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I just didn't, I didn't want to do it. But if you want to find those books, uh, the first one is called Ray, W-R-A-Y. And the second one is... I don't know, but if you can find Ray, it's the second one of that series. That's so, so funny. That'd been funny if she was like, thousand dollars, you got it. <laughs> I would have been like, I'm enjoying the money, but I'm, I don't, I don't like <laughs> And plus the protagonist, like the, the main hero, he's this huge hulking alien that had his throat damaged in battle. So if I can remember how I did it. So this is how I did his voice the entire time. I actually pushed on my throat so that the air passing through would be a bit rougher and this is what he sounded like and so i had to do that for oh, was it 10 10 hours on the first one i think 12 on the on the next so yeah that is <laughs> rough physically on you <laughs> yeah it sounded really good yeah. i got paid but never again <laughs> i bet that was so fun to listen back to and hear yourself <sighs> say editing awesome i just stuff. felt like i wanted to be in a corner and <laughs> burn my clothes <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But the yeah, pay was, was awesome. It, came out. it was it, the pay was good, and I, I never told my family about it. So, <laughs> I mean, you can find it if you if you look up my name. I put my credit on there, but yeah, I didn't tell anybody about it. That is. <laughs> and hilarious. why would I? I wasn't going to make any more money from the sales, so it's like, yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. So, how do you make money narrating books? Can you give a little bit more detail on what people can expect? right out of the gate yeah um how do they get paid well as i said there's two ways on on acx that you can choose actually the author chooses how to do it uh, it's per finished hour uh so that means if the audiobook runs an hour long then you get paid whatever that rate is so fifty dollars an hour you get paid fifty dollars um the second way is what's called a royalty share which means that you will get 20 percent of whatever the sales are um from that book and 20% goes to the author, 60% goes to the company. Uh, and then they've just come up with a new way, which is a mix of the two. So you can get paid um, for your work up front. Well, not up front, but when you finish. And then you will also get sales. So that's, I think, called Royalty Share Plus. Um, and they just come up with came up with that. I uh, haven't used it yet. Um, so those are the three options you can get paid. Um, and then how... ACX works is you get paid once a month. <clears throat> They'll tally everything up. And then usually the last week of every month is when they will issue the check from the previous month. So I just got paid yesterday for the month of July. Um, and then for the month of August, any sales I'll get paid for in the last month or last week of September. And that's how it works. Direct deposit into your account. Um, and then we already went over like how much I average with 114 books. I average about $500 a month. Um, and that's about it. And then, cause I remember this when I did it, but I, I can't remember the exact it. Don't you get extra the more the book sells? Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten too much into that. Yeah. If it sells well, then I think it goes up to 25% each for you and the author. Uh, but I think that's as high as it goes. So it goes up like another 5%, which is just, uh, I don't even bother with that math. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I couldn't remember if it was, if it was a lot, but if you are somebody yeah. that has a platform and you also want to, um, advertise that you're narrating books, then that could get you bumped up into that bracket. 
if you have an audience already of people that listen to you, if you have a blog or, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah, there's lots of ways you can market. Uh, there's a lot of um, podcasts that just review audiobooks. So you can get them to review your book. Um, ACX allows you to have uh, what are called promo codes. So you can contact someone's like, hey, I'd like you to listen to my book, put this code into the website and you can get it for free. Um, and that's a way to promote yourself. And I've done that. Um, I've actually just exchanged reviews. It's like, hey, would you review my book if I give it to you for free? I'm like, sure. You know, so there's not really any money involved. So it's not like payola, but you're giving them a free book in exchange for a review, which I think is completely ethical. Yeah. Yeah. I do that all the time. I review people's books. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's, it's pretty normal now, like with all the bloggers and the, all the, all the bookish people out there. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Anyone that has a podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you working on a project right now? <clears throat> um, s sort of. I, I had an author who contacted me and gave me three books all at once, which I've never done before. And they were all in a series. That was, that just seemed like it never ended. It was just so much work. <laughs> Um, I think I had 18 actors uh, filling out all the roles um, across three uh, books, averaging 12 hours a piece. And it just took months to do because um, there's so many layers. I, I have to wait for the people to send me uh, their files and they're all over the world. Uh, uh, I think a couple of people were in England on that one. So it's like I'm emailing them at asynchronous times and we have to, you know, wait to hear from one another, um, doing retakes. The author will hear something. He's like, I don't really like that. Can you change it? Um, and right now I think I just finished up with the author on the first book and now we're going back and forth on the second book. Like they're all recorded. They're all like submitted to him. Uh, and now, yeah, like he, he contacted me and I made like a huge mistake on one of the chapters. Like, um, <laughs> when I'm reading it, I won't read the full character line. Like if the character has this long speech, I'll be like, and then the man said, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll say the last couple of lines. So when, when I'm editing, I'll have the first bit of that line, the second bit of that line. And then those are my entry points. And I'll just like cut and paste the actor's line in there. So I don't have to record the whole thing myself. Well, I accidentally submitted to him my doing that so it would come to like <laughs> this big epic literally you hear me saying blah 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 to the line it's like oh how embarrassing <laughs> and because this is what i'm supposed to be submitting as like the final project here i, I submit this to you and he's like oh, what is this and like oh sorry um i just got it confused it was chapter 21 of the second book and i got it confused with chapter 21 of the first book and i was like oh yeah i'm done with that and sent it off oh my goodness uh, so hilarious. it was just like yeah, it was a logistics error. Um, blah, blah, yeah. blah. That's what you think of my writing. Got it. Because <laughs> <laughs> literally I say blah, blah, because when I'm editing it, I that's my signal to like, okay, this is what's happening. It's it's a placeholder. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he, he got to see the behind the curtain on that one. <laughs> that's too funny. Uh, but yeah, but that's a, that's a project I just finished. And then one of the actors from that, uh, she's a narrator herself. Uh, she's contacted me to do post-production work for her. So she has her book, and now she's sent me all of her raw recordings and has asked me to uh, do the pacing. Uh, so basically, <clears throat> this is really pull pulling back the curtain. All the, like, the pauses that you hear are completely manufactured. So every period gets um, a one-second pause, every comma gets a 500-millisecond pause, and every paragraph break gets a one-and-a-half-second pause. And so every time that happens, I edit that in. <laughs> yeah, well, for, for, it's, you know. it's funny wow. that you mentioned that because <laughs> when you first start, and I'm sure that it's still the same, uh, they, it's even broken down how many seconds you have to wait when you say chapter one. You have to wait a certain yeah, amount of seconds. Second. And then yeah. when you end the if, chapter, you wait a certain amount of seconds. Yeah, it's a half a second at the beginning of every chapter and three seconds at the end, but that's just a simple edit. Um, but yeah, I, I found like when I'm in the booth, I, I make so many mistakes that I can't really get into a, a flow. Like it's rare that I'll go through a whole paragraph without messing up something. And so I'll just have to go back and put in that naturalness. So when you're wow. listening to it, it's like, oh, it's so even pace. It's like, yeah, that's an edit every time you hear silence. <laughs> wow. Like that didn't just happen. I put those in there. I did not know about that. Yeah. That well, a lot intense. of that can be done by the computer. Yeah. Um, 
basically, I, when I edit it, I can take the entire timeline and I can tell the computer, make every pause in there uh, half a second. And brrr, so that takes care of all my commas. <laughs> and now I just have to listen to, and every time there's a period, um, I can, well, I'll show you. I have a gaming mouse that has 15 buttons on it. Oh my goodness. And I have that programmed to do certain things in my audacity. So as I'm listening, all I have to do is press this button here and it will pause it, add a uh, half a second of sound and then play again. And so I'm just sitting there listening. It's like period, click, period, click, paragraph, click the other button, period, click. And if I have to add like um, any special effects or anything, like I have all those programmed onto these buttons, so all I have to do is highlight it, press one of these buttons, oh, and now it sounds like you're talking in the bathroom, or this one, now it sounds like you're talking in the kitchen, or this one, now it sounds like you're talking in a cathedral, or this one, now it sounds like you're having your own personal inner dialogue thought. And so that way I can just sit there with one hand, I'm listening and just click, 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 and almost edit in real time. So if it's an wow. hour long, it may be, you know, maybe an hour and 20 minutes of me editing and I'm done. That's fascinating because yeah. otherwise yeah. in um, in Audacity, you would have to highlight it, click, drop down, pick, whatever, yeah. re-listen to yeah. it. So if you just want to put a pause on there, basically you'd have to hit the space bar, um, put the mouse where you wanted it, uh, control V if you've copied uh, that sound, then you have to uh, press space bar again for it to play again. Ugh. And I can I can press all that into just one click. That's amazing. Yeah, it works really well. I was so glad I came up with the idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> I did want to ask kind of a side note. Uh, you had mentioned other actors. Do you find them? Or how, how do you do that? Because I never did any of yeah. those. Yeah. Um, if I find a, a project that I think would lend itself well to multiple actors, I'll just go on ACX myself and oh. uh, pretend like I'm the producer and and look up narrators. Anyone can do it. It's an open website. And I'll find someone. It's like, oh, looks, you've got some good credits um, and you have a good voice. So I'll just contact them and be like, hey, this is how much I'm paying. Are you interested? And they'll say yes or no, and then we'll just get started. And it, it is an investment on my part because um, I am paying these people out of my own pocket to do this work in the hopes that the book will sell and then I will get paid. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I kind of it kind of scared me on this last one because I had three books all at the same time. And when I started adding up the numbers, it's like, holy crap, I could buy a car with how much I'm paying all these people for these books. Because <laughs> it was three books. It was 30 hours of of production and 18 people and i was like oh my gosh where am i gonna get this money um and uh, yeah it, it worked out <laughs> actually it worked out really well because i had another author out of blue be like hey can you record this book i'll pay you this amount of money and it worked out that it was almost the exact amount of money that i needed to cover all the actors i was like oh. yes oh that's perfect <laughs> so i haven't made any money yet but i've broken even at this yeah. point so now whatever happens it's all profit Sometimes breaking even is just where I want to be. <laughs> yeah, breaking even is great. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, where can people find you if now they want to listen to your books or they just want to find you out there in social media? I don't really do social media, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> if you go onto Audible or any place that you find audiobooks and look up Commodore James as the narrator, you can find my stuff there. Um, and I'm on Instagram at Commodore James, but I don't really do much with that. Um, I, I let my work speak for, my, for me. I don't need to do anything else. <laughs> you I'm mentioned a podcast. Do you still do your podcast? Oh, yeah, I'm doing a I do a podcast. Uh, it's called The Spell of the Day. And it's kind of a meta kind of thing. If you listen to it, it's brought to you by the Department of Magical Affairs. And they bring you a new spell um, every Wednesday and Sunday. And it's a magical spell. It's got a little bit of the history, what it does, a little bit of the science, um, as, if it were, <laughs> as if it were a real thing. <laughs> Because uh, I was inspired by the Word of the Day podcast by Miriam Webster, and they do it every single day, and it's it's a new word. And I was like, huh, I wonder if I could do something like that, but have it with magical spells. That's awesome. And so, yeah, every Wednesday and Sunday, it's called The Spell of the Day. Nice. Well, I need to go subscribe to The Spell of the Day because that sounds amazing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so... it's, 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 a, it's uh, 
it's kind of funny because some of the spells, um, I, I kind of don't want to give it away, but I'm going to anyway. Um, some of the spells are just simple translations. Like if it's a firebolt spell, then I'll just like, what's that translated in Italian? And that'll be the name of the spell. But sometimes uh, I'll change it kind of like how they did in Harry Potter, where it's actually real words, but they're kind of smashed together. Um, so one of them was, oh, what was it? Uh, uh, you me. Yikansumi was a spell that makes you invisible. You can't see me. You yes, can't you got see it. Me. You can't see me. That's great. But I say it in a way it's like, you can't see me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you wouldn't get it unless you were to see it spelled out. So, right. yeah, it's like a little, little inside joke for myself. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, I am really curious if there was a book or if there's a book that you would love to narrate, even if it's already been narrated, even if it's already been done. Mm-hmm. Like, what's a book you would love to do? Oh, yeah, I was I was tr- trying to think of one, and I don't know, because any book that I've really enjoyed, I really enjoy how they narrated it. It's like, oh, I can't do any better than that. Uh, I like what they've done. Um, well, I, I do like the Harry Potter books. Um, I like any of the, like the Star Wars books. Those things are really well produced. It's like you are li- literally listening to a movie. They've got the, the music, like the John Williams music, and that's incredible. Um, I wish that I could narrate like LeVar Burton. Like he's my, my hero. Yes. Uh, so I grew up with him and he has a podcast as well where he reads short stories. Yes. Um, so I think that's my goal more than any specific book. It's to sound like I like I like his delivery and I've tried to do it and uh, I can't do it like him, which is good because it still sounds like me. Um, I don't want to sound like anybody else, but I do like his technique. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us here. I really appreciate it. You gave so many ah. tips and I mean, things that I like biting into a green apple. Like who would have yeah. thought? <laughs> well, an apple slice, not like apple a whole sli- ah, right. apple shoving your face. <laughs> Uh, just get the juices flowing. Right. I mean, that's fantastic. So I think that our audience, if there's anybody interested in starting to narrate, I think your tip on first finding out if you even have a voice people want to listen to is great. (laughs) Yeah, that's really important. Find out if you, if other people agree with you, because if they don't, they're not going to buy your book. Yeah. And you're going to be doing it for nothing. Yeah, because I've listened to some and I'll just listen to the sample and I'm like, oh, I cannot listen to you for 10 hours. I can't. Yeah. And, I'm, yeah. and I'm done with that. <laughs> and I've had reviews say that to me. It's like, oh, I couldn't get to the book, didn't like the sound of his voice. It's like, well, that's cool. I mean, the other people do like it, so I got that going for me. But if everyone's saying, <laughs> I don't like your voice, you need to listen to that. I mean, sure, you can be a rebel. It's like, no, I'm going to fight and go for my dream. It's like, Okay. But you got to have people following you if you want to be a leader. You're going to have to buy your book. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you so much being on, especially our season premiere of season two. And thank you so much. And I'm going to go check out your podcast because that sounds absolutely fantastic. Awesome. Maybe I'll have three listeners now. All right. Well, thank you so much. I feel like as an audiobook listener, I learned so much about what happens before it gets to me and I get to enjoy it. So this was amazing. And thank you for being our first guest in season two. And for all of our listeners, we will be back soon with lots more super exciting bookish content. Thanks for joining us, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.